Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman and joining us now on the phone from Cairo, Egypt is Ahmed Saeed, a member of the Egyptian Opposition Coalition and head of the Free Egyptians Party. It's one of the nation's largest political parties supporting democracy, religious freedom and strong relations with the United States. Mr. Saeed, thanks for being with us. Thank you, John. On Thursday night, Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi said he would not tolerate people who try to overthrow the government. What are his options and what do you think he meant by his statement? I think that the president has been very clear uh, since taking over power in, uh, on the 1st of July uh, to report only to his clan and to his group, uh, uh, completely disregarding the opposition. Uh, which, which, in our opinion, <laughs> is the majority of the country, regardless of the calculations of the elections. So there has been very organized steps uh, since they took over in order to uh, change everything and alter everything in the country for the Muslim Brotherhood to, to, to control the country, to control the, 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 the major institutions of the country. <clears throat> and with the exception of uh, the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Defense, I think he was successful in that to a big extent. And in these protests we are witnessing on the streets of Cairo, of course, they follow that power grab that you just spoke of by Islamist President Morsi. Several of his close aides have now resigned from the Morsi government. Is this the beginning of the end of the Morsi-led government, his presidency? Well, I'm not in position to say it's the beginning of the, of the end or not, but he's in a very awkward position right now. Most of his aides have uh, resigned, and uh, uh, when asked uh, and interviewed why they resigned, they said because no one asked us for anything and no one really consulted us, which, give the, the imp which gave the impression in Egypt that he is being aided actually by the Muslim Brotherhood uh, clan uh, that he belongs to, which Egyptians think is very serious. But uh, what I really want to say here is that what's going on in Egypt may, may appear or may seem to be for the international community as if it is a revolt against the uh, Constitution Declaration, which people thought it is uh, dictatorial and taking Egypt backwards a little bit, or maybe they will think it's against uh, the Constitution, which he had offered for a public referendum next, uh, uh, next week. But I personally think that what's going on right now is more of a, a revolution against the dictatorship of the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, their fascist uh, way of governing the country. Um, here in the United States, we, we saw Morsi recently meeting with U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and his role in help brokering a ceasefire between Hamas and Gaza in Israel. Has the government been helping the U.S. government? Has, have they been helping the opposition in any way to stop Morsi's power grab? No, the thing uh, about Gaza is. <clears throat> I mean, uh, uh, the public opinion here in Egypt is that uh, the United States has been very satisfied with Morsi's performance because, uh, as a matter of fact, the only success and achievement that Morsi had uh, come to achieve so far was to uh, quieten and uh, to calm down the, the process of the uh, conflict between Israel and Gaza. And it is actually because they have excellent relationship with Hamas they, are, they belong to the same group and they belong to the same doctrine and everything. So it, is, uh, it, it was really sad to see the United States uh, support him. Uh, and, and that's at least the public opinion that the United States is supporting Morsi because he's helping them uh, reaching, uh, an agreement, uh, <coughs> reaching an agreement with, uh, with Hamas in order to solve the problem once and for all. And this is the general opinion right now. I know you were very vocal in trying to warn the U.S. government about the uh, reach of the Muslim Brotherhood. Be before any of this really uh, started, we know Hamas, of course, also under the umbrella of the Muslim Brotherhood, just like the Freedom and Justice Party that Morsi heads. Uh, was anyone listening when you were trying to warn the United States about this potentially happening? No, John. Unfortunately, the United States is not listening. When I was, uh, you know, I was a member of parliament for the past five months before the parliament was dissolved, and I have met several congressional delegations, and uh, I've met uh, Senator John McCain and uh, uh, John Kerry, and I, I don't think they're really listening, to be very honest. And you're a democratic country, and you should accept the truth. But I don't think they're really listening. I think the United States has a reputation of uh, only respecting those in power, those who think they are strong, and uh, people were hopeful to a certain extent that uh, if Romney takes over, he would be more <coughs> aggressive with respect to dealing with human rights in Egypt and things like that. But the United States had had a reputation during Mubarak 
Hillary, Hillary Clinton is uh, in her very famous speech when she said after a few days of revolution that uh, they uh, they see or they estimate the, the situation in Egypt as stable and we didn't understand what, sta- what, what stability is and what's the definition of stability uh, with uh, Clinton. Uh, but the problem uh, now is that uh, uh, the U.S., this is the, the, the chance of the U.S. To, to create its legitimacy in the Arab world by standing for uh, uh, principles for democracy, for human rights, and it is really amazing they are uh, uh, supporting the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamic faction and the Islamic political Islam in Egypt, and then uh, later on uh, uh, complaining from events like 9/11 or from terrorism, and while they are doing the same thing that happened in Afghanistan several years ago when they supported the Mujahideen, and then all of a sudden they, these people have turned against the United States. So we either clean up, build a real civilized world, uh, or uh, try to look after very minor interests that will, uh, uh, that will lead in the future to some catastrophic results. And for the people watching right now, the Americans who are tuning into this, tell them directly why they should fear the Muslim Brotherhood. Aside from what we've seen with the, with the violence against certain religious minorities and, and certain groups, what, what's, what do we still have to fear about the Muslim Brotherhood? It's not about fearing the Muslim Brotherhood, but they have to see for themselves that Egypt has about 15 million uh, Christian people. Uh, who are who, whose rights would be completely ignored under the Muslim Brotherhood? They might be pretending now to the U.S. administration that they uh, respect the rights of everybody, but you have to come and talk to the to, to, to the Christians here and listen to and listen to their views about what is going on. They have to study very thoroughly the, the, this document called the Constitution, which he wants to pass next uh, uh, next week. A document that is meant to divide the people more than to unite them. Constitutions supposedly unite uh, nations rather than divide nations. So they have to look at the Constitution and to see how human rights, <coughs> how women rights, how babies' rights are uh, violated in this, uh, in this document. And to see that uh, this is a step backwards to take the country backwards with respect to, theo- to theocratic uh, uh, rule. Uh, it's a very critical situation now. And I think that the United- if I was to tell something to the American people, or to the American administration, that the- you have to rise above... Uh, 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 short-term interest and uh, look at the future, at how the people, I mean, we're in the world of globalization now, and it has become uh, very clear that unless the whole world is, is peaceful and safe, no country will ever be safe. So, I mean, we have to rise above some small interests like the, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict or uh, something like that, and in order to see how we can build a country that, if built in the pr- correct way, it will affect the rest of the Middle East. And when you mentioned the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, we're also seeing the new leader of Hamas uh, entering into Gaza through Egypt, perhaps str- signaling some kind of tie between the Morsi government uh, and Hamas in uh, Egypt. Do you think that President Morsi is moving close to perhaps killing the Camp David Accords and becoming hostile towards Israel? No, I, I think that uh, uh, his only uh, his only merit right now is the ability to. Uh, he has a good relation with uh, with Hamas, but uh, I mean you have to you have to consider here that the public opinion in Egypt uh, has uh, the, the the Palestinian the the feeling of the Palestinian sympathy towards the Palestinians have gone down because people feel that Egypt is helping Hamas and not the Palestinians now. So it is a matter, this is one thing that you have to look at. The other thing is, uh, we are very concerned about the security of Sinai, because uh, uh, the Sinai Peninsula, which is Egyptian soil, uh, there are a lot of things that is going on right now, and we don't know exactly what is going on. There are a lot of Mujahideen in Sinai, and there are rumors that uh, uh, there is a secret deal to give the Palestinians a piece of Sinai in order to, to, to solve the problem. That could lead to a bigger revolution in Egypt. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, the Israeli case is, is very uh, complicated, and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I mean, is very uh, sophisticated. And unfortunately, the only achievement that, or the only merit that Morsi has uh, during his past five months was something that is not related to Egypt. Now, given the current climate in Egypt, the political climate and right now, and all the pressure on Morsi, how does that impact Egypt's traditional role as a stabilizing country in the Middle East? 
Well, the situation is very critical right now. The economy is going down but, uh, big time. The IMF is reviewing its, uh, its loan that was supposed to be given to Egypt that would have enhanced the credit uh, uh, worthiness of Egypt uh, worldwide. So all this is, uh, if you take this into consideration, people are uh, getting jobless every day. The unemployment is rising. Uh, 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 poverty is more and more. I mean, it's been two years now. The country is completely unstable. Uh, unstable. And at the same time, tourism has been uh, totally devastated after uh, the revolution. And uh, part of the Sinai thing that I'm telling you about that has Sharm el-Sheikh and Hergada, these places were billions of uh, dollars were generated from tourism in these areas are completely down now. So if you take this into consideration, we are passing through a serious crisis. We need uh, to think very uh, closely about the future. And unfortunately, the president has not been moving in this direction so far. Uh, he's been, his decisions have been very provocative to the Egyptian people. Now, we're seeing these tanks parked outside of the presidential palace. Uh, they are part of the Republican Guard, the Presidential Guard, and not directly uh, part of the main military. But what would it take to get uh, the, the majority of the military involved in this conflict? Well, this is a question that has been discussed in the past few days. But I think that if, uh, if the people start, if, if we start having some sort of any indication of a possible civil war, I believe that uh, the, the, the armed forces will immediately intervene and come back to the streets. Now, a lot of the uh, military officials were trained here in the United States. There's a long history uh, of Egypt working together with the United States. Can, can people here in the United States feel some sense of comfort knowing that uh, the military is there and that they will support democracy? Well, I, 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 I can't answer this question in light of the new military uh, military team that we have right now, all the old military team that had been trained in the United States and we've been knowing for years, uh, I would agree with you in that assumption. But with the new uh, generation that is coming up right now, I really don't know what the, what the, what the directions are. And from what you've seen, do you believe what others have said, that Morsi is in fact trying to establish a new dictatorship? Well, uh, it is very clear. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to realize that. I mean, the constitutional declaration is uh, is one thing uh, that he is trying to impose on the country, immuning his decisions, which is something very strange after a revolution in which more than 2,000 people have died in, for, for freedom, and uh, immuning uh, uh, the constitutional assembly uh, from any court decision. Uh, so you are, uh, he has the uh, executive power, uh, he has uh, the legislative power, and now he is taking over the judicial. So if you take all this in, in, your, in your hand, so then how would you define uh, dictatorship? And of course, we are also hearing again from Mohammed al Baradai, a former United Nations diplomat. He's been an outspoken member and one of the leaders of the new secular opposition. But who would you like, who, who uh, in your party would you like to see, or which party would you like to see in leadership now running Egypt? Well, uh, right now, all the uh, liberal parties or the so-called liberal national parties have united under one front called the National uh, Salvation Front, uh, of which I'm a member of its uh, high committee, and it is led by Mohammed al baradei right now. Uh, I think that Dr. al baradei uh, has a lot of uh, uh, legitimacy and uh, an excellent reputation and credibility in the street that would allow him uh, to lead the country in the coming period if something happens. However, uh, we still have a president. Uh, he might be losing his legitimacy every day. Yesterday, the National Salvation Front have announced that he is not legitimate anymore because he has accepted to see Egyptian people killing each other in the streets. And his uh, speech yesterday was, uh, was a bit uh, uh, provocative and uh, did not touch on... Uh, the rest of the Egyptians, rather than touching on his driver that has been wounded and went to the hospital. I mean, it was shocking in a, in a lot of things. He, he called us the opposition, and uh, he called his proponents the uh, uh, supporters of legitimacy, making us against legitimacy. So, I, I mean, we're entering a very, uh, it, it, we're in a very awkward position right now.